So today I'm in downtown Melbourne, a great walkable area here in historic downtown Melbourne to talk about a topic that's very important to people that are considering a move here to Melbourne, Florida. And I'm going to discuss the top five reasons why you may not want to move to this area of Melbourne, Florida, which is also known as the Space Coast here in Brevard County. So full disclosure, I've lived in this area for 40 years. I've been a realtor for 36 years, and I love living here. There's not, not everything is perfect. There's some things I don't like about it. But if I didn't like it, I'd be moving out of this area. But I know there are some things that some people will not like about Melbourne, Florida. And I'm gonna go over those facts, and I'm gonna go over those things and discuss those in this video five of my top five reasons why you may not want to move to Melbourne, Florida here in 2023. And we're going to get after it right now. Okay, the first reason... Okay, so... Let's talk about growth and traffic, which is one of my top five reasons why you may not want to move to Melbourne, Florida. So it's not a newsflash, but Florida is growing like crazy. In 2022, there was almost 400,000 new people moving to Florida. A lot of them moved here to the Melbourne, Florida area. There's new homes going up everywhere. There's new commercial areas going up everywhere, everywhere in the county, it's just, it's everywhere. Now, growth and traffic is all relative. If you're coming from a big city like Chicago, New York, Miami, even on its worst day, the traffic's not like that here. But if you've been here for 40 years, like I have, it's not the same place it was 40 years ago. There's a lot more traffic. There's a lot more congestion. Now, with that being said, if you take away accidents or road construction or special events like if there's a special rocket launch at the cape or if there's a parade or some kind of special event you know traffic traffic snarls and traffic jams maybe 10 minutes five or ten minutes now it seems like a long time when you're expecting zero traffic but 10 minute traffic jam is is really nothing comparatively so that's what you have here if you take away those other things so there's naturally there's going to be accidents it's going to back things up you know, you're gonna have construction at times, single lane from three lanes, gonna back things up. And there's times when the tourists hit the beach area here and in the spring, it's a little more congested, but nothing more than that. Nothing more in a normal day, normal rush hour traffic is gonna be more than, much more than 10 minute back up or wait. It's just not, but it's all relative. You have to decide. You may be used to rural traffic and no traffic, at all and this may seem like it's a huge snarl traffic to you same with the growth you may be from a rural area and the growth here may be too much so this area does have some nice rural areas it does have some nice rural areas but if there's not miles and miles and miles of them except in some of the extreme portions of the county so the growth is one reason why some people may not want to move to Melbourne Florida because it's growing and the growth is not gonna stop. Okay, so next on my list of my top five reasons why you may not want to move to Melbourne, Florida, is the fact that Melbourne is is a medium-sized laid-back town yeah. it's not a bustling metropolis like Orlando Tampa Miami Chicago New York it's just not and if you're looking for a big downtown area that you can enjoy the shops and I, I love going to downtown Chicago New York and those areas so Melbourne is obviously not that and if you're looking for a big area that has a lot a lot a lot of culture you know we have culture here, but it's not a, not a ton, not like the big cities. And it's a laid back town, so we're not that type of a town. 
but we're also not the type of a rural area either where it's just country living and you go miles and miles and miles before you get to civilization and before you get to shopping some people want that live in the country so there are areas in Brevard County and around Melbourne Florida that you can get some of that but not a lot so there are some of the outskirts of towns here in the outskirts of the county where it is more rural and remote but most of Melbourne does not have that so if you're looking for something in the middle Melbourne has that Melbourne is laid back but if you're looking for something that's more rural and much more busy as an urban area that's not what Melbourne has So my name is David Jelinek. I'm a local real estate agent here in the Melbourne, Florida area, which is also known as the Space Coast. I've lived in this area for over 40 years. I've been a real estate agent for 36 years. I know it very well, and I want to tell you the story about Melbourne, Florida. If you're not familiar with my channel, I do videos that are all about the Melbourne, Florida area. What's like to live here, what's like to work here, what's like to play here. The food, the beaches, the entertainment, the real estate, and much, much more. Again, I've lived here for almost 40 years. I know it really well, and I want to tell you the story about Melbourne, Florida. I've sold hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of homes here in the Melbourne, Florida area, and I can help you too, but I can't help you unless you reach out to me, shoot me a text, send me an email, give me a call, and I'll be happy to address whatever needs and wants that you have for possibly moving here to the Melbourne area, give you honest answers for what it's going to take for you to move here to Melbourne, Florida. And I'm getting calls almost every day, emails almost every day from people, and that's why I put out this video. I'm not negative on Melbourne. I love Melbourne. I've lived here, again, for 40 years. If I didn't like it, I would move away. But there are some reasons why some people may not want to move here. And that's what I'm doing at this video, addressing those items so you can know what those negative items are before you may even consider a town or a location where you're going to move. Again, my name is David Jelinek. Please consider hitting that subscribe button if you want more information to keep updated on videos that are all about Melbourne, Florida, because I put them out just about once one every week. Okay, so next on my list is home prices. And in, in home prices, I'm going to include rental prices. So if you're considering a move to Melbourne, Florida, here in 2023, Home prices are high and rental prices are even higher. So let's talk about the values of Florida over the last, say, 25 years. So, as I have mentioned in other videos, this is not your grandfather, grandparents, or your parents' Florida anymore. Back in 1998, you could buy a brand new home in a nice suburban community, four bedroom home, 2,200 square feet on a lake for $125,000. That home is worth about $500,000 today. That's different. That's only 25 years ago. I'm not talking about 1960 or 1970. I'm talking about a home that was built in 1998. That's 25 years ago. That's the difference. So it's almost 300%. In fact, it's more than 300% higher in home prices. Now, is it worth it? In my opinion, it's still worth it to live here at that price. But I have people call me almost every day asking me about homes and values and property. And some of them are just shocked at the prices here. And yet their homes are selling every day at those prices. Now, will there be a collapse in the market at some point? Well, just look at the chart that I have here. You can see over the years what's happened. Again, let's use that example of a home built and bought for 125,000 in 1998. Well, over 10 years, that home went up in value to over 300,000. And then when the recession hit in 2008, there's some nice eating establishments here in downtown Melbourne. That home after the recession hit in 2008, it bottomed out in 2011-ish almost back to the original value, maybe about 170 or so, somewhere in there. And then from 2012 to current year 2023, you can see the drastic, drastic increase, the substantial increase in value 
to where that home went from about 175 up to 500,000. So for the past, oh, 11 years or so, we've seen that increase again to almost 300% in that time. And that's what property has done, not only in the Melbourne area, but almost all of Florida. That's what you can expect here if you're moving here to Melbourne, Florida. Again, is it worth it? That's something you have to decide. In my opinion, I would still buy here. I love this area. I think it has a lot to offer. But that's something you have to decide. The prices are higher than what a lot of people think. And then you have to decide for yourself if that's going to be worth it to you. Now, that's concerning home prices. If you're looking for a rental, rental prices might even be higher than if you bought a home. So right now there's so many apartment complexes that have gone up in the last 10 years here in the Melbourne area. Perhaps they knew that rental prices were gonna be high and, and uh, taking advantage of that. So, you know, a two bedroom, modest, new apartment even in the Melbourne area is going for 1,500 to 2,000 a month. If you want something bigger, of course it's gonna be more. A single family home is probably average at about 3,000 a month. So at $3,000 a month rental home, of course you're spending right there almost $40,000 a year on rent alone. So I can understand doing a short term to rent to determine if you like the area or not, but long term that's just not a good financial decision to be renting at that price. I'm just passing one of my favorite little restaurants here, Backwater here in downtown Melbourne. I walk through here. So again, as I previously mentioned, the growth is increasing, traffic is increasing. There's a demand on homes for purchase and for rent here. And that is driving up the prices on not only homes for sale, but homes for rent. So you just need to be aware, if you're considering a move here to Melbourne, Florida, the prices are probably higher. Okay, they're probably higher than what you're thinking they're gonna be. And that's why you need an agent like myself, an experienced agent that knows this area, that has been working in this area, that has lived in this area for 40 years, I've been a realtor for 36 years. I know the prices, I know the areas. I know how to help people the best to see with their budget, what they're looking for. I can find it for them because I know all of the areas here in the Melbourne, Florida area. And that's what you need if you're looking to move here, somebody that can help you, but I can't help you unless you reach out to me. So send me a text, send me an email, give me a call. That way I can help you with your consideration of your move here to Florida and discuss with you what the possibilities are. So my next item on the list for my top five reasons why you may not want to move to Melbourne, my next item on the list, and one of the most notorious here in the past few years is just the cost of insurance. I've explained this issue in several other videos that I have, and you can see my videos and through the playlist on my channel there, Living in Melbourne channel. In this segment, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna combine insurance, I'm gonna combine car insurance and home insurance. And both are high here in Florida. Both are high here in Melbourne, Florida. So if we start with car insurance, flat out car insurance in the state of Florida is the highest in the nation. Statistically, car insurance in Florida on average is about 3,200 a year in Florida and that leads the nation when it comes to cost and car insurance and that's a good thousand dollars above the average the nation's average per vehicle so if you you and your spouse have a vehicle and if you have a pot potentially a teenage child that has a teenage adult that has a vehicle you know it's a thousand per vehicle per year that you're going to pay above the national average 
when it comes to car insurance. Now, why is that? Uh, the reasons are many. And uh, perhaps it's because of, there are a lot of tourists here, tourists that don't know where they're going half the time. We've all experienced that. But that's just the way it is here in Florida. Now, there's no excise tax for moving your vehicle here. If you become a resident here in Florida, you have to, of course, get your license changed over. You have to get your registration on your vehicle changed over. Those are all each about less than 100 each for doing those. So there's no, some areas have excise taxes. Florida does not have that. Some municipalities in Florida may have that, but not in the state of Florida. So car insurance is a expensive item here in Florida. So you have to budget for that. You have to be ready for it. But the second half of that and even more ominous is home insurance. So home insurance has been a snowball that's been building here for the last 30 years. And through the last 10 years, we've had quite a few storms and hurricanes are only part of the problem. In fact, they're not the major part of the increase in costs for home insurance. Actual fraud is the most important and been the most significant factor when it comes to the increase in home insurance. And I'll quickly describe the fraud is the way the state of Florida has their insurance system set up here is that if you have a if you have damage to your home, you can go to a contractor, you can sign the rights over to a contractor and have the contractor fight with your insurance company about getting the repair done. So let's just use a roof. For example, an average roof here, an average home is probably 15,000, maybe 20,000 or so. I've seen personally where contractors will write it up for 25, even 30,000 to do the roof. If the insurance company doesn't balk at it, then they've got that. They'll do the roof for their 15 or so, pocket the other amount of money they're able to pocket because you've signed over the rights to the money to your contractor. That's happening way too often. So if you combine that with the number of claims and Florida leads the nation in lawsuits when it comes to insurance claims, like 79% of all insurance lawsuits are in Florida. And generally the insurance companies don't want to spend a lot of money and time fighting lawsuits where they're gonna lose to some degree anyway. So a lot of times they settle and they settle generally for over market value. So that's that's the really big reason why insurance pro costs are going up. There's been some dozen or more insurance companies that have gone insolvent here in Florida or have just left and not writing policies anymore in Florida. So, le so decreased competition, of course, always leads to higher costs when you have less competition. So there are still some very good insurance companies around here in Florida, in the state of Florida, about 20 years ago, established a state-run, state-owned insurance company called Citizens. It was initially designed just to help out for those that were hard to insure, but because of the high costs, Citizens has taken on a bigger and bigger role in the market, which it wasn't designed to do. It's now up to almost 15% of the market. So Citizens Insurance has always been a little bit less, or quite a bit less than the over-the-market insurance companies and it's taking on a bigger bigger role now the governor just said that in, the citizens is also going to go up so the insure, home insurance is is an increasing thing we have to be aware of you have to know your budget it's just part of the overall cost scheme here that you need to know about before you move here that uh, things are higher than probably what you're expecting again is it worth it i tend to think so i love living here i'll pay it but I don't like it. But if you're considering moving here, you need to know about these things before you do. And again, I'm here to help sort out these costs to make sure you know exactly what you're getting into, what the current costs are, what the future costs are, because there are some benefits to our tax system here, our homeowners tax, property tax system. 
which I'm not going to go into here because this is more of a reason why you are not wanting to move to Melbourne, Florida, but there are positive reasons why you would and you have to see one of my videos for why I love living in Florida. Okay, for the last reason now why you may not want to move to Melbourne, Florida, there is no Bucky's here. There's no Bucky's. The nearest Bucky's is about 50 minute drive away up near Daytona Beach. If you don't know what Bucky's is, just Google it and look it up. Melbourne has no Bucky's, so I can understand why you don't want to move to Melbourne because there's no Bucky's. So just kidding, that is not one of my reasons, although I wish there was a Bucky's here in Melbourne, but that is not one of my remaining reasons for not wanting to move to Melbourne, Florida. Okay, so let's go on to my next and last reason why you may not want to move here to Melbourne, Florida. And we're gonna talk about the weather. So you can see me here, it's May. I'm sweating, it's probably close to 90 degrees. But I love this weather. It's actually probably about 65, 70% humidity. It's probably a little lower humidity than normal this time of year. It's probably about average temperature for this time of year. But I, I actually love this weather. A lot of people don't. We get this weather eight to 10 months out of the year. We get this humidity eight to 10 months out of the year. We get two months generally that are just perfect weather, 70 degrees-ish or high, 50 degrees for a low. But most of the time it's hot and humid here. And if you don't like that, you're gonna struggle with it here. And I've had people over the years that just can't get used to it, don't like it. They don't like staying inside all the time with their air conditioning. They like the out more. And it's just hot and humid here. This is the way it is. Personally, I got used to it after about a year of living down here. I got used to the hot heat and humidity. And again, I, I, I don't mind it, I like it, actually. Now there's things I do miss. I do miss the change of season, so you don't get a change of seasons here. So that's one of those negatives, okay? From in my perspective, you don't get a change of season. So I'm one of the crazies, my wife and I are one of the crazies that we spend our summers here in Florida and our winters up in Maine. So figure that out. So we do like the cool weather, but we just like living in Florida ourselves, the majority of the time. But a lot of people don't. A lot of people aren't gonna like the heat. They're not gonna like the humidity. And a lot of people don't like the hurricanes either. So again, full disclosure, coming out of college, I was a meteorologist working here at Patrick Space, actually it was Patrick Air Force Base at the time, now it's Space Force Base. I was a meteorologist working launches at the Kennedy Space Center and at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. So I know weather very well. So hurricanes are, are and always will be a worry here in Florida. Now ironically, in this county, Brevard County, which is the Space Coast, the last hurricane to have its eye go through the county was actually in 1979. Hurricane David, which was a category one hurricane by the time it came through Melbourne. Now, we have had the last 10 years, 15, 20 years, we've had several very close calls. We've had hurricanes that were strong hurricanes, cat threes and above, that were 50 miles away from our shore here. And we're actually headed right for us and that happened to stay offshore. We were very fortunate. So that's not to say there's no worry, there's no, not a problem with them having, because any year we could get the big one. But you have to just be prepared. We have our panels, we have our evacuation plans, but there's, again, I've met many people that just don't like to worry that every year. They don't like it, they go somewhere else. Of course, they may have tornadoes somewhere else or earthquakes somewhere else, but here we have hurricanes, and at least in most hurricanes, you have a little bit of advance notice when they are headed your way. So again, some people don't like the heat and humidity, they don't like the worry of hurricanes and they wanna change the seasons and if that's the fact, 
then the weather here is just not going to be for you living in Melbourne, Florida. Now, Melbourne, Florida is on the east central coast of Florida. So we have kind of an in-between weather pattern. We're not the tropical weather pattern that Miami or down south will get, where they rarely get a frontal passage and cool things down and get less humidity. We do get some of those that it cools down and the humidity goes down. But we're not like the Panhandle either, where you know they'll get even snow and uh, temperature in the 20s and sometimes even the teens. The lowest temperature I've ever seen here in 40 years in Melbourne is about 15. I've seen snow once, and last year we actually had a little bit of sleet, which is not very common either. So, so anyway, those are my five top reasons why you may not want to move to Melbourne, Florida. Again, I love it here, but for some people, those factors may not be what you want here in Melbourne, Florida. Again, if you're considering a move here and you don't mind those issues, give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email. I'd be happy to show you what is available here. New homes, resales, retirement communities, new home communities, schools, everything. Again, I've been here 40 years, been a realtor for 36 years. I know the area very well. I've sold hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of homes here in Melbourne, Florida in the Melbourne, Florida area. I know it very well and I want to help you, but you got to reach out to me for me to help you. And again, I'm here in downtown Melbourne, a very popular area, walked by a lot of nice restaurants. I'm going to go to one of my little favorite restaurants now, get a little snack here at Mustard's Hot Dog Stand. Love that place. Again, thank you so much for watching. See you on the next video.